But first. Dear Diary, Thursday, January the 13th. Woke up at 8.30. Must shift some of that festive fat. Made a Hugh Fernley Whittingstall lunch. Five root soup with bacon. Oh, lush. Hairdressers at 12.30 before the one show meeting. Thursday, January 13th. Got up, went to work. Yeah. See, I just don't, I don't do that diary thing, I'm afraid. Disappointing. Is it? Mm. Uh, over to Anita Rani, who does see the benefits of keeping a diary at a time when many of us might see it as a bit of an old-fashioned thing to do. Charles Darwin did it, Jessica Simpson does it, and Adrian Mole started it at 13 and three quarters. And I'm sure many of you have promised to yourselves that this year you'll finally put pen to paper and record the world as you see it. But in the age of social media and such busy lifestyles, is the tradition of keeping a diary finally entering its last chapter? I don't really know any guys that actually write a diary. I do it so when I get older, I can see, um, I can read back what I've done. I think the old diaries are dead now. I think Facebook and Twitter are like the new diaries of today. But one diary fan feels that people who don't record their thoughts are missing out. I keep a diary kind of as a, a way of partly keeping track of what I've done in case I want to look back on it in the future. Um, also, just as a way of thinking about what I've been doing and thinking through problems or things that are worrying me. And Phil's passion for diaries doesn't end there. He's been posting the diary of Samuel Pepys on his blog an entry a day for the last eight years so far, making it available for everyone online. So Pepys wrote about the big events of the day, like the Great Fire of London, the plague and battles with the Dutch, but also on a very day-to-day -day level about uh, what he should have for dinner when friends are coming round in the evening. How relevant is Pepys's diary for us now? Both from a day-to-day -day point of view, what everyday life was like in the 17th century, but also in terms of politics and what's happening to the country. If we had lots of people writing diaries now, that would be an amazing picture of what life was like in the 21st century. But even if you're not going to be the next Pepys, writing down your thoughts can be useful. According to studies, making a note of our emotions can make us happier as it helps us process them. Anna McLaughlin is an organiser of Cringe, an event where grown-ups get up on stage to read their teenage diaries to an audience. This is a list I wrote about what I was looking for in my perfect man. Tall, half a head taller than me. Feet, big. <laughs> We usually get at least 100 people down and sometimes up to 150. It's just been a real word of mouth thing because I think people have enjoyed it so much and found it so funny they want to tell their friends to come along and listen to people just making complete fools of themselves. What on earth do you get from doing a night like this? It sounds so self-obsessed. I think part of it is the universal nature of the teenage experience. Everyone went through the same things, everyone worried about the same things, how their clothes were, whether that boy had noticed them and whether their friends at school really liked them or not. So I think everyone relates to what you read out. Yep, we live in a digital age where we've got a variety of platforms to make a note of the world as we see it. But for our most intimate and deeply embarrassing thoughts, only Dear Diary could be entrusted with those. Ah, oh, look at that, Hugh. Aww. Do you keep a diary? I don't keep a diary, but I used to keep a scrapbook when I was a student, and that lovely note would be just the sort of thing I'd have put in it. <laughs> I love you, Fernley Winston. 